Never in my life did I think I would utter the words that Batman introduced me to Jesus Christ. And yet here I am making a video. And let me be clear, this isn't introducing me to Jesus in the way he introduces villains to Jesus on a weekly basis in the comics. I'm talking good old fashioned on my knees praying to God. So how did Batman introduce me to Jesus? Well, it's a little bit of a story, but I'm going to tell it to you now, so don't worry, no clickbait. It started when I was a kid. I absolutely loved superheroes, as kids tend to do. My three favorite superheroes were Kurt Wagner, aka Nightcrawler, one of the most prominent Catholic heroes, Spider-Man, who often is particularly Christian, but not always depicted that way, and the Batman, who I believe is undeniably Catholic. He was entrusted with the Chalice of Christ, also known as the Holy Grail. So while there's some debate about whether he's Christian, Catholic, or, you know, just non-denominational, or maybe not even religious at all, I hold him as Catholic. But that's not really important. What is important is I loved superheroes. And it's undeniable in the 90s that Batman absolutely took over the TV. You have the animated series, which is still regarded as a masterpiece to this day. And my personal favorite, Batman Beyond. Which please, if any executives out there are listening, give us another Arkham game as Batman Beyond, as Terry McGinnis. Please, that would be so awesome. Again, off topic. Suffice to say, as a kid, I loved superheroes, and that's the point I'm trying to make. And then I grew up, and as a middle schooler, of course, I distanced myself from superheroes because, well, that's uncool. I'm a teenager. I'm going to become a teenager. You have to like cool things, not superheroes. Then comes high school. And yeah, I'm generally a nerdy kid, but it's not like I'm reading comics or super into superheroes anymore. Then 2008 to 2009 happens, and we get two things in that time period. We get Batman The Dark Knight, one of the greatest movies of all time and one of the best portrayals of Batman in animation. Or I guess movies, not animation. And that's followed up by The Watchmen in 2009. And these two things sent me back into a deep, deep love for superheroes and Batman. I couldn't get enough. I read the psychology of Batman. I read the psychology of The Watchmen. I wanted to know. I wanted to learn more. The, the vigilantism, the edginess, I loved it. And thus my passion for Batman and superheroes was reignited. Fast forward a couple years, I still love superheroes, I still love The Watchmen. At this point, I've probably seen The Watchmen at least a dozen times. I even watched it in theaters like three times. I loved The Watchmen. And the year is something like 2010. I'm sitting in a basement hanging out with my cousins, playing video games, watching movies, bored teenager things, and I'm surfing Facebook because, you know, Facebook is still relevant and cool at this time period. And as I'm scrolling, some random person comes across my feed, someone I had no idea who they were. However, they made a post about Batman. It wasn't a particularly, like, great post about Batman, it was just Batman. But I absolutely love Batman, so whoever this random stranger was, I had to make a comment on said post. And you know who was the author of that post? Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, wouldn't that be a stupid end to this story? The person who made that post was my now wife. Because of a random chance of events, her post about Batman came across my feed because we were friends, because we went to the same high school together. I had no idea who she was. I didn't know she existed. But I do know that she liked Batman. And because of that post, I was able to ask her out on a date. And that first date was absolutely wonderful. A few months later, I proposed. And after like six or seven years of engagement, we finally got married. But that's a different story. The point is, I would have never met my wife if it wasn't for Batman. Now, what does that have to do with Jesus? Well, we're getting there. Part two. I'm married, deeply in love, and the sole provider for my family. And as the sole provider for my family, as many people find themselves in this position, I can't just up and quit my job. And at the time, I hated my job. I was absolutely miserable, but there didn't seem to be a way out. I applied for other jobs. I couldn't get them. I had a mortgage, so I couldn't just up and quit. So I did what many young men did, and I just bottled it all up, went to work, came home, and lived life as best as I could. And by that, I mean giving in to addictions, drinking a ton, losing myself in video games, basically doing anything I could to distract myself from the horrible job that I hated that I couldn't escape. There are many nights I found myself asking, why am I stuck at this job that I absolutely hate? Why am I supposed to be miserable? 
And somewhere in there, my dad gave me some great advice. The best advice I've ever gotten. And that is to be happy, you have to work out your mind, you have to work out your body, and you have to work out your spirit. And I'd been ignoring all of those. I was well over 400 pounds because I was just gorging myself on food and sweets and soda and energy drinks just to chase a little bit of happiness. So I decided to take my dad's advice and said, you know what, I need to find the truth. There has to be a truth out there. There has to be a God. There has to be something greater. There needs to be something more than this miserable, pathetic life. And I thought to myself, the best way to find the truth is to live it. So I tried every religion I could. I was a Protestant for a little while. I tried Buddhism, New Age woo-woo stuff. I was even a Satanist for a stint, and I got really into the Satanism. Tarot. It really vibed with me. And then one night, all the bad decisions finally came to a head, and I had a medical emergency. And I knew in my heart of hearts, this was it. I was going to die. I had no one to blame but myself. But you know what was strange? As much as I hated my job and didn't want to go back, I find myself not wanting to go. I said, I know I'm not ready yet. I, I know that I'm miserable. I know that I'm unhappy, but I don't want to go. And I didn't know what to do. Lord knows none of us can afford health insurance, let alone a hospital bill. So I did the only thing that I felt natural doing. The only thing I could think to do when I truly felt like I was going to face the end. And I got on my knees and I prayed to God, the God, not Satan, not Buddha, None of the pagan gods, but the God. And I just said, I know I messed up. I know I don't deserve it, but please, just give me one more chance. And then the strangest thing happened. I heard my name in a voice I'd never heard before, and I fell asleep. And the next morning I was better, medical emergency over. So at least now I had a path before me. I knew God was real. I knew God was listening. I knew Satanism was wrong. I tried Protestantism, it didn't work for me, so obviously something else is going on here. So I decided to try Catholicism. And that was a journey in itself. It took many years before I actually converted, many years of learning, many years of trial and tribulation. But I finally found my way home. I lost 100 going on 150 pounds. I got a new job finally. I had so much to be happy about, but most importantly I had to be happy about I knew God was there. So that eight minute story in a nutshell is, I like Batman. I always liked Batman. Because I liked Batman, I commented on a random Facebook post. Because I commented on a random Facebook post, I married my wife. Because I married my wife, we bought a house. Because we bought a house, I had a mortgage that I had to pay, I had groceries to pay for, I had a family to provide for, so I couldn't quit my job. And because I couldn't quit my job, I became so miserable, I started searching for something greater. And because of that, I found Jesus. So why am I bringing all this up? I promise it's not a humble brag. I just feel like now, as people are miserable, as the world seems to get worse, as we're all losing hope, it's important to remember that you can't understand and comprehend, you can't appreciate a masterpiece if you're standing up close to it and looking at it. Sometimes you have to take a few steps back to really appreciate a work of art. And that's how God works in our lives. This seemingly random set of events that took place over the course of 25 years brought me to the ultimate happiness, knowing my wife, knowing God. But in so many of those moments in between, I felt abandoned, unloved, unworthy, Lost, confused, horrified, so many different words. And there were so many nights, like I said, that I spent saying, God, why do you hate me? Why do I have to sit in this job that I hate? Why do you want me to suffer? And I got my answer. It just took years and years, decades. And the answer was, I had to be at that job and I had to do a little bit of suffering there so that I could come to know God. If a little bit of earthly suffering is the admission to heaven, it's well worth the price. I also think it's an important reminder that to suffer is to be like Christ. When we pray and ask to be like God, when we pray and ask to be like Jesus, we are asking to suffer. Because Christ suffered, we too will suffer. That suffering will bring about something better. 
And I know oftentimes that can feel like a cop-out when someone's dealing with the death of a family member, the death of a child being told like, oh, well, everything happens for a reason, can feel very condescending and not feel great. But there's truly some truth to it. In the moment, it's not going to feel that way. You're going to feel those emotions, and that's okay. Emotions are a very human thing to have. But we have to remember that God is weaving a tapestry with our life, and we're not going to be able to see it unless we take a few steps back. And that means waiting months, years, decades to see how it all fits together. And then once we can, we can say, wow, that really makes sense. I stayed at that job that I hated so that I could meet my wife, or so that I could become Christian, or so that I could help others even. Wherever we are in life, God will find a way to use us. And that use isn't always going to be for us. Sometimes it's helping others. Sometimes it's building up skills we won't know until the end comes. But we can appreciate and have faith in that wherever God is leading us and guiding us, is correct for us. So my point to all of this, if you're currently suffering, if you're currently going through hard times, if you currently can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, I invite you to take a few moments to pray on it and think about it. And you might just be able to see how that what you're going through now will benefit you later or help others. As always, thank you for taking the time to listen to me and have a blessed day.